Hey there, it's Barbara here, your favorite longtime professional home care personal support worker, union steward, and certified member and co-chair of a joint health and safety committee. As you can hear, yeah, I'm recovering. COVID finally got me after 1,681 days. I have since tested negative for three days. I caught it in the workplace. I'm going to chronicle that journey in another set of videos, but this one is relevant to that. This is my first day back to work and my very first patient was in the place that is still in outbreak. Our policies and procedures dictate airborne precautions, which is a gown, gloves, N95 mask, and goggles, because you see, it doesn't just get in your nose and mouth, it also gets in through your eyes. So I show up, I do my thing, and when I come down, I'm looking for the dedicated garbage can. I asked the person behind the desk, she asks, what for? I said, I have to put my PPE in there. Oh, you could have just put it in one of the garbage cans outside the infected patient. I said, my patient isn't infected, but your facility is an outbreak. Therefore, this is what we have to do. And there needs to be a dedicated garbage can for us to put this in because we are not going to take it back to our cars and bring the infection with. Well, she didn't seem to know anything about it, but she pointed me to the little garbage can behind her desk. Not the proper thing, but it was something, again, not taking it to my car. And when I finished my next patient, I received a call from one of my supervisors. Now my soups are wonderful. They've known me for 13 years and they know me rather well. So I'm talking to the supervisor. We are having to set up some follow-up meetings. And she said, wow, you sound so much better. I said, I am, but I'm still really, really tired. I said, it's not as though I was going to fall asleep behind the wheel driving down, but just really, really draggy. But that's okay because both of my patients are pretty light duty. So then I started to tell her about this and she said, oh, and then I told her what had happened. And then I said, I'd sent the email to my other supervisor. So she knew. And then she asked, what place is this? This place. Oh, she said, yeah, we're having trouble there. The workers have been going in and the facility has been giving them a hard time. Okay, this is my reaction. <laughs> All right, okay. Tell me. So she did. Yeah, the workers are going in with the full PPE. The facility is pushing back. I said, well, I don't need to tell you what the policy and procedure is. I said, even if I was in health and safety, I know what the policy and procedure is. Yeah, that is all kinds of wrong, as I'm sure you well know. I said, I didn't get the pushback this morning, but I am going back in this afternoon and it will be different staff and I will see what happens. And if it happens, I will say, our policy and procedure dictates. You see, our policies and procedures, I wear like a suit of armor because they protect me and others as well. And I'm not afraid to use it. I said, if that fails, I will tell them. Here's the phone number. Feel free to call my supervisor. I will wait. So then my supervisor asked, why would they have such an issue with that? I'll tell you why. Appearances. Say you're sitting there having a nice tea with your Nana and then you see people showing up dressed in what looks like halfway to hazmat suit. Yeah appearances. We'll see what happens tonight. So I am going to tell you right now as workers, if you're going to a facility that is in outbreak, you wear airborne precautions, gown, glove, N95, goggles. Don't let anyone bully you out of it. Oh, something I forgot to mention, the staff there, we're wearing regular surgical masks. And on the doors of those rooms I passed by that were in isolation, it said droplet precaution. No, it's supposed to be airborne. I remember sitting in the health and safety meetings, figuratively screaming that we needed N95s because my coworkers were dropping like flies and yes, dying from it. And I try not to think of how many people would have, could have been saved if they listened. Some facilities were proactive and they didn't suffer any losses. Unfortunately, it wasn't until public health finally came around that they did that because up until that point, they were saying public health says no. And I was saying doctors and nurses on the front line say yes. Who do you think I'm going to believe? Hmm? Hmm. So yes, if you're a worker, policy and procedure. Don't let anyone bully you. Now, if you're someone going in to see a loved one and you see that there's an outbreak, if you don't want to put on the whole schmear, at least wear an N95 that's fitted to your face. Surgical masks don't cut it. They're for droplet only. N95s are for airborne because that virus does have hang time. And here's the thing too. I think I'm not the only one who thinks the season will be bad because I've been hearing tell from a few people that limitations are being put on certain things like medications and toilet paper again in some areas. Take of that what you will and leave the rest. And I want you all to stay healthy, stay safe, stay tuned, don't become complacent, and I will see you on the flip side.